In the past week or so, a couple of interesting events have happened. It all began with the creeps who created the Godometer video. They filed a DMCA against me and were claiming benefits from the advertisements in my video where I scrutinized their abundantly shite portrayal of the Christian faith. Fortunately, when I appealed, the advertisements were gone. This meant how their abundantly stupid claims of intellectual property over my video were just as worthless as their message. I think this only demonstrates how their interests were prioritized for the money from the advertisements considering how they didn't want my video to be taken down. In this video I will show how another useless little cretin sent me a personal message regarding a comment I had left on his video. He responded by saying Correct. That is why we need an objective historical revelation that is not based on one man's opinion. God is not appearing to me right now, and won't in the future. So human history is the only place left to find revelation from God. God revealed himself in human history, throughout our history, which is why the Bible is the only book in, in the history of the world written over 5,000 years ago by over fi 50 different authors who each received revelation from the same God who foretold the coming of the Messiah Jesus who would die for us to save us from sins message me if you want to know how to be saved I replied with objective is defined as something that is free of any bias based on explained facts and can be observed the Bible is extremely biased, the claims made in the Bible are not backed up with any valid explanations that can be verified, and we have yet to see him like Moses did, which again can be alternat alternatively explained as a result of him smoking opium or some form of drug. Please give reference as to where and when why God apparently revealed himself to you. To suggest he has been revealed throughout history is a claim you need to justify with verifiable evidence and which can be examined. You can refer to prophecies like you did during our debate, however, when you fail to give a precise date and explanation as to how the prophecy came true. He replied with, Correct! The facts can show you are without bias. You ready? Read this. This just made me cringe. In his blog, it describes how he met a guy on a random chat website, a little like chat roulette. As you can see, both of their interests included suicide and death. What a freaking little weirdo, especially when he explains how he was trying to help him. In the discussion, the stranger says how he isn't religious. However, Sean defines religion as a weapon used by Satan. Again, he demonstrates his ignorance of the actual meaning of words. Religion is actually defined as people's beliefs and opinions concerning the existence of nature and worship of God, a God or gods, and divine involvement in the universe and human life. Sean doesn't believe Christianity qualifies as a religion. Apparently, he thinks religion keeps people away from God. God hates religion. He describes further how despite how Christians do a lot of research about God and the Bible, it doesn't mean they know God. How the flying, cunting fuck did he come to this conclusion? He later gives references as to how he knows God through the Bible, making his last statement look monumentally retarded. I genuinely could not believe how backward this just makes him look. The stranger from the other conversation also outlines how much of a creep he is. I also saw on his blog where he was messaging a person called Eric who challenged him about filing a false DMCA against Thunderfoot. Sean, to this day, still claims how Together for Peace filed the DMCAs in his name. Eric explains how he was aware of how Together for Peace did no such thing and again challenged him. However, Sean squirms and says how Together for Peace was lying. Throughout the conversation, Eric challenges Sean yet he worms himself into a hole by depicting how this is an action of Satan. He called it a spiritual war for his soul. He later accuses Eric of wanting to kill him. I think we are witnessing links of old Sean returning. And judging by how he emotionally blackmails his viewers to like his videos demonstrates how his insecurity is cer certainly coming back. I think the work he is doing with Jews of Jesus is getting to him. Michelle reveals how his views are being challenged frequently by his team members. 
After reviewing his ridiculous blogs, I later found out how he deleted the comment I had put on his video, so I asked him, why did you delete it? After realizing one of my messages couldn't be sent to him, I found out how he blocked me. What a little maggot. He really hasn't got a backbone to his credibility at all. After all this, I can say I'm 90% certain of how we are all likely to see the old Sean return. In his recent video, he challenges the USA government for indoctrinating children away from the belief of God through the current educational system. This has no doubt been raised with Josh and has been identified as a truly backward statement. As Nickel SD raised in his video response to Sean, he acts as a representative on behalf of the organization. Considering how charities like Jews for Jesus are heavily reliant upon investments from government officials, he should be more careful with the statements he makes as a representative of the charity. He has already had a warning from them when he, when he attempted to justify his position regarding how the Jews deserve the Holocaust. He was also asked to take his video down when he asked for $2,000, which he apparently needed for summer camp. I think he should be more than aware of how people know how he failed in his last spineless attempt asking for donations. So for him to have the nerve to ask again only demonstrates how lobotomized he must be. To think how people are just going to suddenly forget how he defrauded a charity is completely batshit crazy. Sean, you must be so dense light bends around you. However, I think his egotistical speech in his message to the people who attended the Reason Rally demonstrates perhaps the most brainless collection of words I had ever heard spew from his mouth, especially when he reviews his own performance as powerfully persuasive. If only he knew how he really looked. Yet I think he would identify these judgments as an act of Satan, much like how he saw Eric in his blog. Sean, do you know what 90% of dust is? Dead skin. That is what what you are to everyone who engages with you. From bean to cup, you truly fuck up. If you're atheist, you're both illogical, unreasonable, hypocritical, and you're going to hell because you're denying the very God on which you're relying upon. And so, I invite you to repent and put your faith in Jesus Christ, God in the flesh who died for your sins. He's willing to forgive you if you'll just come to him and acknowledge him. He, he's readily available, and you've acknowledged him this entire time. And every thought you've ever had is itself an acknowledgement of his existence. And yet, as the Bible says, people suppress the knowledge of the truth. God has openly revealed himself through the creation, through the laws of logic and morality that are all around you. And we're made in the image of God. You should be able to look at your fellow man and say, there's something funny about these creatures walking around. They don't seem like everything else. And they seem aware of this God. This God whom you're aware of too. Reason Rally 2012, I hope you played this lengthy, but probably potent video, because this is the destruction of your worldview. God bless. I guess the main question on our minds now is when are we likely to see him come back to reveal his true colors? I would say you share this video with him and see how he responds. And if he doesn't like the swearing, well... Sorry, can you stop, can you stop swearing, please? Okay. Yeah. I'm really sorry. You won't hear any more swearing from us. You massive gay shit!